Green bean casserole has been around for a very, very long time. I'm in the camp of not really liking it, uh, but I know a lot of people absolutely love it. So I thought that I would create a homemade version that is super easy to make in the Ninja Foodie and taste absolutely delicious, even I like it. Welcome to the Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life using real food and we keep it real simple. And today we are going to make a green bean casserole. Now, if you're not familiar with the traditional green bean casserole, it is basically green beans from a can, a can of uh, cream of mushroom soup, and I think that's about it. And then it's topped with some French's crispy fried onions. Well, I've never been a fan of it. Um, I. I don't know, I just don't like it. But I know a lot of people like it, so I wanted to create a recipe that was super easy to make and really delicious and completely from scratch. And even the crispy fried onions. We are going to try our hand at making them in the Ninja Foodie so we don't have to use the box kind. All right, so let's start that first because they could be cold. So that I would, you could do this even a day ahead of time, it would be no problem. First thing we're gonna do to get the French onions starting to crisp up is to preheat the Ninja Foodi. So I'm gonna do that on broil, and I have the basket in, okay? I want that surface to be really hot, that's what I'm gonna put the onions down on. So go ahead and hit start, 10 minutes, we probably won't even need that much time. I have a quarter cup of butter, this is salted butter, and it's melted, and I just threw it in the microwave for a few seconds, and it's been sitting here, so it's not even hot, but it doesn't need to be, but it does need to be melted. And then I have a half of an onion, that's all I'm gonna need, and conveniently enough, the green bean casserole itself uses the other half, so it's you know one full onion for the recipe, if you wanted to try your hand at these crispy onions. And then I have two thirds of a cup of all purpose flour, and I'm gonna season this up a little bit. So I'm gonna put in some salt. Whenever you're doing a breading, it's, it, you, know, you do tend to season pretty heavily because you want that flavor to be on the outside. So I'm gonna put a teaspoon of salt in there. That's fine grind sea salt. And let's put in some onion powder. This is not onion salt. If you had onion salt instead, cut back or omit your salt and use the onion salt instead. I'm gonna use a teaspoon of that as well. Now, for the onions. So, you know, I looked at these. I've tasted these. And, you know, I can't really find it. I know they're made from real onions, so it says, but I think they're like maybe dehydrated or something, because you really, really can't see any onions. So I want these onions to be super, super thin. So we have a light coating, a crispy exterior, but we still have real onions um, in our crispy fried onions. So to do that, I'm gonna use a mandolin. That's the easiest way to get a super thin slice on your onion, but if you don't have one, just try to get as thinly sliced onions as you can with a very sharp knife. So I'm gonna set this over here for now. In fact, I'll move this so you can see what I'm doing. So I've got this mandolin. I really like this one. I've had a few of them. I need to move my cutting board closer. I've had a few of them and I'm really pleased with this one. And it's in my Amazon store, so I will link to that below. It comes with a cutting glove, which I really like. Because these things are very, very sharp. It also comes with a guard, um, which I'm not gonna use right now, because I'm gonna use the cutting um, glove instead. And I'm gonna hold my hand totally flat and then just go down and let's check the size of these make sure they're they are as thin as we like them to be and they look really good to me so they are about one to two millimeters so they are thin very thin now i'm going to show you just in case you don't have a mandolin how we can just use a knife to do the same thing. It's just a little bit harder, but you can turn your onion. So it, I'm kind of out of onion now to even make this safe. So what I would do is turn it this way so you've got a, a large surface and then just thinly slice. And really, I think I did pretty well. So definitely can be done by hand and I'm gonna finish this up right now with my knife. All 
right, that's good. Move these over to the side, Move that over there. Let's get this all mixed up. And then we can plop our onions right in the butter. This is not a recipe that I've really tested out, um, but I thought it would just be fun to do and see how they work. That way you know whether it's worth, uh, worth trying it or not. I'm gonna move those all around to get them coated with the butter. It's gonna help. It's gonna do two things. So the butter, the fat from the butter is gonna combine with the flour and create that nice crispy crust. It's also making them wet so that the flour adheres. So I recommend using the butter. I think it's gonna work better than milk or something like that because you don't have the fat content in the milk. You could try heavy cream if you really didn't wanna use the butter, but I think the butter's gonna work the best. Now I'm just gonna mix all this up really well. And we're gonna dredge these onions lightly through the flour. All right, that looks good. So let's go ahead. We have about four minutes, that's perfect timing. So let's go ahead and dredge our onion slices into the flour and just sort of toss it around. Try to break them up a little bit so that they're equally, um, you know, covered in the flour and not sticking in a big clump. might be easier to do with your hands, to be honest. That's looking pretty good. Now, what I don't know yet is if I'm gonna put all of them in in one batch or if I'm gonna make do two batches. That just depends on how they line the basket. I don't wanna put too many in because I don't want the bottom level to more to steam or you know just get soggy i want them to be really nice and crispy for our green bean casserole all right that looks pretty good so now i'm going to go ahead and wash this stuff off my hands and by that time we should be ready to get these into the air fryer All right, so we have preheated for 10 minutes on broil. So we've got the pot nice and hot and the basket surface hot. I'm gonna go ahead and spray it pretty generously with the oil. And then I'm gonna lift some of these up and I'm trying to keep them so they're not, you know, really in a big clump and just scatter them around the edge of the basket here. Now the timing at, or the temperature, the timing is gonna be what it is. I'm not sure yet how long these are gonna take, but the temperature is something I've been thinking about. And I don't wanna go at 400 because I don't wanna burn the outside, but I don't wanna go at like too low of a temperature either because that could potentially soften the onions so much and not, not be really great. And let's go to the air crisp setting and take it down to 375. And I'll leave it on 20 minutes. It is definitely not gonna take 20 minutes. I'm thinking somewhere between five and 10 and it's gonna be fine. I will check it in five minutes, give them a toss around, see how they're doing and see if this is even worth it. But it's super easy to do. So if they turn out delicious, I will say, give it a try for sure. All right, so it's been about four and a half minutes and I'm gonna go ahead and open the lid and just take a peek. Uh, and I can see some browning and they look just like they're not gonna work out very well, but I'm not getting discouraged. I'm gonna give them a flip around, separate them. Now they're looking better. Before they looked like they were all in one clump, but they don't look like that now. All right, I think we can go another, maybe one to two minutes at most. Uh, they look like they're browning up nicely, but remember, you don't want them too brown because we're gonna top our casserole with them and then heat that up some. So we don't wanna go too far with the browning. We don't want them to look burnt. All right, it's been seven minutes. Let's take a peek, see if we went too long. No, I think they're gonna be fine. A little, a few of them are a little browner than I would have liked, but that's okay. All right, so get them out on a cooling rack, separate them and let them just cool down because they will become more crunchy as they cool. They look pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. 
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the second batch done, which will be interesting because these are a little drier now that the butter has absorbed the flour. Maybe they'll work out better, so we'll see. So I'll keep these over here and I'll put the new batch over here. And we'll give them a taste test and find out which way is better, whether you should let them sit a little bit or not. And then we will get to making our green bean casserole that is ready in, oh my gosh, like no time at all. All right, they both look really great and I didn't see much difference in the way that they cook, so I don't think it matters if you do them right away or you wait, leave them in the flour for a few minutes. I'm gonna let them uh, this batch cool down while we go ahead and start preparing our green bean casserole. So what I have here is 12 ounces of fresh green beans that I just washed and trimmed and they're fresh. I haven't tried this with frozen. I'm thinking it probably will work, um, but I'm not, I haven't tried it yet. I would not use canned green beans, I don't think, to go under pressure. I'm not sure, I think they would get really mushy, but I haven't tried that either. All right, and then I have eight ounces of portobello mushrooms. You could use the white button mushrooms, that's no problem at all, and they're just sliced. I'm gonna put those in. The remaining half of an onion that we didn't use for our topping, just diced up. I wasn't even real particular about the size. Put that in. Put in our seasoning mix. The seasoning mix is one teaspoon of fine grind sea salt, a half of a teaspoon of black pepper, and a half of a teaspoon of thyme leaves. Now, I wanted to mention, because somebody uh, made a comment on a Facebook group of mine, that they thought that the thyme was really overwhelming in one of my recipes. And that could just be a personal preference, but it also could be because somebody's mistakenly using ground thyme. Thyme leaves are not ground thyme, they are different. Ground thyme would make a much uh, more thymey flavor to your dish. So you, if you have ground thyme instead, I would put a pinch in, really, or just adjust at the end. But the thyme leaves, oh, they add just a wonderful flavor. So we're gonna go ahead and put those in. All right, and then the garlic. I don't know if I have any recipes that don't call for garlic when it's a savory dish. I love garlic. All right, so I have one whole bulb of garlic, but I don't want you to worry about that. It's really mild and mellow in this dish because we do pressure cook. And all I did was remove the peel and then smash it with my knife. And you could use anywhere from five cloves to 10 cloves, but if you wanna use minced garlic, I would just use about a teaspoon. All right, so if, if you wanna smash it like I did, I just take the ends off. I leave the paper on, take the back of my knife and just smash it down. It makes it really easy to peel and then plop it in the pot. All right, that's it. All right, now for our liquid. Uh, I am using three quarters of a cup of beef stock. You could use chicken stock if you prefer, and that's no problem at all. And I'm using a quarter cup of sherry. That is just my preference. You could use one full cup of beef stock or chicken stock, that would be perfectly fine. But I really liked the flavor that the sherry gave it. And this is not even sherry that you buy at the liquor store. This is just some cooking sherry from Walmart that I had in a cabinet when I was testing the recipe. I was like, hmm, I wonder if this would work. And poured it in and it was so good. It like completed the dish. So I really recommend giving it a try. All right, so three quarters cup of the beef stock and a quarter cup of the sherry. That's all we need to put into the pot right now. And just give it a, like a little you know, mix around. And we're gonna get the rack on because we need to make the roux and we're gonna do that at the same time as we cook everything else. So go ahead and if you need to move your string beans over, move them over so that you can nestle this rack down. Okay, so it is on the bottom. So we have room for the two inch Fat daddy -O pan to go on top. And then to this pan, we're gonna add a quarter cup of butter. I'm using salted butter, but you could use unsalted, that would be fine. And a quarter cup of flour. And then you don't even have to do this because I have not done it at times and it works fine, but I'm gonna just sort of 
mash the butter around and sort of mix it up. Or you could melt the butter ahead of time, but it will melt while we bring the pot up to pressure. So I'm just kind of making a paste with it. And again, you really don't even have to do that. All right, we definitely wanna cover it because we don't want the water to go in there. We're gonna put this on the rack here, grab our pressure lid. Make sure the, the, um, the pan is towards the front. You don't want it towards the back where the uh, release valves and stuff are. Make sure your valve is to the seal position. We're gonna go ahead and choose uh, pressure cook. Now we're gonna, the high is fine, that's what we want, but we're gonna take it all the way down to zero minutes. Now, if you were using frozen, like, because a lot of times frozen string beans are par-cooked, maybe take it down to low heat and, and try that instead. But for the fresh string beans that I've tested this recipe with, they turn out perfectly. They are not mushy, um, but they are cooked just enough. And so it worked out great. So we'll let the pot come to pressure, which probably will take maybe, you know, eight minutes, 10 minutes, something like that. And then it will say zero, and then we will immediately release the pressure, open it up, finish up by adding the roux in and a little bit of cream, and then get our crispy onions on top. Speaking of which, why don't we taste those now? All right, so let me grab a couple of these out. These are the Frenches, obviously. And then we'll do a couple from our first batch, let me get a one that's even more brown, and then from our second batch, and let's find out. Are these worth making? All right. They're crunchy, they're good. They've got a nice flavor. So let's see. Mmm. They're good. Now they're a little less crunchy than these, but the flavor's 10 times better. All right, let's try this batch. There's the same, no difference. Mmm. There's no comparison in flavor. Homemade wins, so give them a try. All right, we are seeing some steam and um, like the little button back there is moving a little bit. So I think we're gonna come under pressure uh, momentarily. And then it's just going to go under pressure and immediately turn off because we just did zero minutes, meaning it never actually starts pressure cooking, but it builds the pressure to get there and then turns off. So in the meanwhile, Jeff was telling me that his mom always put slivered almonds in her green bean casserole. And you know, I think that would be really good. So if you guys wanted to add that uh, to this recipe, I think it would be absolutely delicious. Um, the other thing, that I wanted to mention is you can make this up ahead of time and put it into a casserole dish. And then just before you wanna serve it, put your crispy onions on top and then, you know, warm it up. Now the pin is popped up so it can, there can be a little delay between the pin in the back popping and sealing the pot completely. And then when it turns, just either start the count up for pressure cooking or the countdown, I think it is for pressure cooking. And then, um, but this will never, it'll just show zero and then turn off. All right, the pin has dropped so we can open up the lid. Always do that away from you because it is steamy. All right, so go ahead and remove the pan with our mixture in it with the flour and the butter. And then we're gonna give it a little stir. It's gonna look horrible, don't worry about it. Just give it a little stir. All right, there we go. This also doesn't look too good, but don't worry, it's going to, I promise. All right, so now we just dump this in. This is the roux. There's not a flour taste because we've cooked it. It's a nice little trick when you wanna thicken something and you wanna pressure cook beforehand is just put that roux right on the top rack there. All right, so we'll go ahead, let me get this glove off. We'll go ahead and pour in the cream. And now we just mix it all together and it will thicken up. It 
It looks soupy, but trust me, it thickens. All right, so I'm gonna take it on the sear saute and we're gonna take the temperature down to low medium and just let it thicken up. There it goes. So now is the time that I would remove it. If you wanted to serve it as a casserole, you know, for Thanksgiving or any other time you want a side dish and you want it in the casserole, not in the pot, take it out now, put it into your casserole dish, and then you can warm it up. It will thicken up as you warm it up, and then you top it with your onions and just put it under the broiler. But I'm just gonna show you how to do it as all in one. I'm just gonna keep stirring this, let it thicken just a little bit longer. Then we'll put our onions on top and we will air crisp on 400 for about five minutes. This is looking really, really good. So basically what we did was we made a cream of mushroom soup from scratch and it is delicious. All right, that looks pretty good. All right. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off because we will go under the air crisp function. We're gonna put our onions on top. Now you could make a whole onion if you wanted them totally covered. Traditionally though, I think they leave some areas open so you can actually see what the casserole is underneath. All right, and now we're gonna go on the air crisp function. 400 degrees for about five minutes. We're just warming those onions up. Everything is cooked. You could really serve it right now if you want it. But we'll wait five minutes and then I'll plate it up and give it a taste. All right, there we go. Oh, it looks good. I might've gone a little too long. They look a little brown, but it does look good. Nice and crunchy. Let's go ahead and get some out. All right, there we go. Now, the most important thing for me is the texture of the green beans. So I'm gonna start there, make sure that they are not too, too soft. And they cut like they're perfect. Mmm, absolutely perfect. All right, let's see what the, all the flavor here, all of it together. Remember, I'm not a fan, so for me to eat something like that's a green bean casserole, it really has to be good, at least to me. Mmm. Mmm. This is fantastic. A nice garlic flavor, which I love. You can omit that, of course. String beans are cooked perfectly. Everything tastes nice and fresh. It's not overly salty. It's a perfect balance. And I think these toppings of the fried onions is just simply perfect. All right, I hope you make this. Give it a try. Even if you're not a fan of green bean casserole, super easy to make. Makes a great side dish. And make those crispy onions because they're fantastic.